We want to get all the metal work welded up today and we have to alleviate all this rotted metal, make a patch, then I can start doing body work. So here it goes. So what we don't want is a bunch of, uh, we can use other studs to lift it or I can push from the backside. We'll just get it tacked and then weld it like a lap weld and then the bondo will go over it. You won't even notice. You can see it's not really rusted that bad. There must have been condensation on the bottom. And then it just rusted out where the lowest point was. We're going to be replacing it. The rest of it is solid. So what we got here is plan B. My first plan was, because he's always complaining that I end up making patches way too big, is I went in where the pinholes were, used a die grinder, and just kept on grinding out until I hit thick metal and I thought it was good enough. I should have looked inside the tank and seen where it was all rusty because when we made the patch, went to weld it, we had leaks. We went after those leaks and then all of a sudden you're running into squirrely metal that has rust in it and it foams up. We were chasing the leaks. So we kept chasing these leaks what I should have done right from day one, I got lacquer thinner in here right now. I should have made a patch that went from here, and you can see all the rusty metal, and gone right to here. You don't even see under here because the bike is low and the tanks go under. By the time you do body work, you wouldn't see it. But what happened was we started going after it, and he ran into this spongy metal or whatever and kept chasing after it. Now we've got it where there was a lot of weld metal on there, but you can hear this. I got lacquer thinner in here and there's no leaks. So it looks like a hot mess right now, but after we're done and we're going to put a liner in it anyway, we won't have a leaky gas tank. Nothing worse than doing all your body work and paint and all of a sudden somebody finds a leak. I've seen it even where guys had the petcock. And where the petcock went on gas was leaking out of the threads and it wrecked their paint job. So you got to nip this in the bud, do the first stages. Now we're going to flush it out and there's a three-step process. We're going to put a liner inside the tank. We've got the KBS system. First step is to clean. We use this on the Hummer. I don't think we put it on video though. It worked pretty good. So we're going to use it on this. First we ran this evapo rust through it, but then we got this liner kit and it's got its own system, you know, one, two, and three. And we're going to run that through there now and maybe that'll might have screwed ourselves with the evapo rust. We'll put this in there and hopefully that gets everything out. So we got all the acid out of it now. We rinsed it around, flushed it out with fresh water. And then they're saying you're supposed to blow it out, but nobody wants to stand there and hang onto a bolt or you know, an air nozzle. So we just got this going into the gas pipe hole, and then there's those two, two petcock holes. It's just on cool, it's not on hot. We was gonna let that run for a while. Get ready to seal the tank up here. The entire inside kind of looks like this. I don't know if that's flash rust or if that's that zinc phosphate coating that uh, is supposed to be left behind with the rust blast top of this. Here's the sealer. And you're supposed to carefully mix this without getting air in it. I'm gonna mix this up real good. I feel some chunkies in the bottom there. So I'm to plug these holes. I'm actually gonna use the original petcock, top and bottom. Because we have a new one. I'm just gonna check it, make sure the threads fit. I'll use the gas cap that came with it. We have a new gas cap for it too. That seems to fit on there pretty good. Looks nice too. 
Of course, with the aftermarket, this piece is a different outlet than this. The rods are even ever so slightly different. I think I'm going to use this top hardware when we're done. But just for the sealing part, I'm going to use the aftermarket stuff. It's going to be all coated with that tank sealer. I needed to get this kit because there's a seal in here and we needed that spring. I didn't see it sold separately. The uh, top piece doesn't fit on this rod. There's different threads for this cap screw. Not a very good kit in my opinion. I wire wheeled this weld area because when we're done sealing the inside I'm going to be painting the outside of the weld area with this stuff. Got it all mixed up. And she goes. Putting the cap on, I gotta rotate this tank around for like a half hour now to uh, try to get it all through the inside of it, cover every surface. I'm working on getting it all out here, and I spilled some here and there, but I probably got about half of everything I put in there out. It's supposed to be a thin coat, they don't want air bubbles in it. These guys do have a product for actually stripping this stuff out too, which is interesting. So if you get a tank that has like a failed liner, apparently you can strip it out. I painted up that whole well area. That Hummer actually had straight up pinholes in it. And I followed the instructions on there and painted it like this, put some glass on it, and then painted over the glass. And it actually didn't leak. I wonder if it developed a leak right now. Whoever bought that Homer is watching this video, drop a comment.